Uh, as a county, we have continued to work uh, to better address the mental health needs and crisis that we face on our street. Uh, and we're incredibly grateful uh, that this is a regional response and that our entire region is committed uh, to doing things differently and to figuring out how we can do more. Uh, assembled here today is one part of that, our law enforcement community, uh, which has time and again been asked to bear the burden of our failure to invest in having a system that provides the right care to the right person in the right way. Our law enforcement officers inherit every societal breakdown that, that, that happens including our lack of investing in proper mental health care. And they've been doing that for many years and it's a burden that they should not have to bear. And so we have taken action to launch mobile crisis response teams to try and get the right person the right care. That individual suffering from mental health illness or injury needs a trained clinician. They need someone who has the time and the training and the expertise to deal with them. It's a burden that should not be placed on law enforcement and they've been shouldering it for far too many years. And so our efforts around mobile crisis response are designed to alleviate the burden on law enforcement, freeing them up to keep us safe and provide these individuals with the right care. But in order to do that, we need their help and cooperation. And I want to thank every law enforcement jurisdiction in San Diego County uh, for being a partner and being willing to work because not every call that comes into 911 requires a law enforcement response. And while we want people to call the access and crisis line, if they have an individual in help, we want you to call 888-724-7240. That is where we want the public to call for an individual in mental health distress to, to, to dispatch mobile crisis response teams. We know that these calls will continue to come in to 911. And so we're here today because as of Monday of this week, all 11 law enforcement agencies in our region now have a system in place to refer a non-emergency mental health call into 911 to the mobile crisis response team uh, to get that individual the right type of, of, of help that they need. And so I am grateful uh, for all of our agencies. It's not easy. Uh, even the process of figuring out how they can transfer that call or get people there is a burden that they have to bear and they have borne it and we are grateful for it. Uh, we are now about two years after hearing from the community that they wanted a different response to these calls after hearing from law enforcement they didn't want to be the ones uh, to respond to these calls uh, i brought forward a policy to the board of supervisors more than two years ago to create and fund mobile crisis response teams countywide and every step of the way we have been driven by moving with a sense of urgency and a sense of speed and this piece getting all 11 jurisdictions all of the law enforcement agencies uh, in our county to sign an mou is a significant step forward uh, and being able to increase the proper dispatchment and utilization of the mobile crisis response teams. Um, and again, we are going to continue to drive the access and crisis line, and we want to continue to highlight we don't want you to call 911 for an individual with mental health crisis. We want you to call 888-724-7240, uh, but we know that folks are accustomed to calling that line. And so we appreciate uh, everyone who is with us here today. Uh, you're going to hear in a moment from uh, Chief Roxanna Kennedy from the Chula Vista Police Department, who's also president of the San Diego Chiefs and Sheriffs Association, from the communications manager, uh, Carla Even, Chula Vista Police Department. Uh, you're going to hear from uh, Police Captain Alejandro Hernandez with National City Police Department. And I, in particular, want to recognize and thank Chula Vista and National City. They were the first jurisdictions to embrace and say, let us try to figure out how we do this. Uh, they did it early, they did it well, uh, and we are incredibly grateful and appreciative to Chula Vista and National City for your leadership role in doing this. Uh, also here with us today are a whole bunch of other jurisdictions uh, that are online, uh, that are now a part of, of connecting individuals uh, directly to MCRT to get the right care. Uh, I want to thank Dwayne Woody, the Assistant District Attorney. Our District Attorney has been a leader on mobile crisis response teams. She's been a leader on mental health. Uh, she has a blueprint for mental health, and we greatly appreciate the district attorney's office and, uh, and all of your work. I want to thank uh, Chief Chuck Wayne, City of Coronado, who is here, uh, Assistant Chief of Neighborhood Policing, uh, Bernie Colon, City of San Diego Police Department. I want to thank Melissa Santaga, City of San Diego Police Department Administrator, Dispatch Administrator, Chief Ray Sweeney, La Mesa Police Department, and Police Services Manager Christine McMillan, City of La Mesa Police Department. Uh, we also want to thank the other jurisdictions not here today but are a part of the MOU and are regionally helping El Cajon, Carlsbad, 
uh, San Diego Unified Port District, Oceanside, uh, and Escondido. And then again, a particular thank you to our MCRT partners, Telecare, and uh, Christian, who you, you will hear from shortly, and uh, Megan Patrick Thomas from Exodus. Telecare and Exodus are doing incredible work for us, uh, and we are very, very, very grateful. Mobile crisis response teams represent a better way to deliver behavioral health services to an individual in a state of crisis and an individual in a state of need. And everything that we are doing in behavioral health is about getting the right care to the right person in the right setting. Uh, and since we've launched these, we phased them in countywide. There are now 16 teams working different sh shifts. I want you to know this program is now 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with every law enforcement jurisdiction in our region participating. And we will continue to monitor uh, its implementation. We will continue to make adjustments. Uh, we made the choice to move fast and get it up and running, learn the lessons on the fly and make adjustments. But to date, mobile crisis response teams have responded to 1,277 referrals uh, to date. Uh, a thousand of those were through the access and crisis line because in the early days we didn't have as much interoperability between 911. About half of the calls we received uh, resulted in an individual being able to be treated and stabilized uh, on site. About 22% of the calls had an individual transported into a service such as the crisis stabilization unit. Our mobile crisis response teams work really well with our crisis stabilization units. We just opened our sixth, our seventh, if you count the uh, juvenile one, uh, and we have more crisis stabilization units coming online, again, to get the right care to the right person in the right way. I will tell you in the instance where law enforcement does have to respond uh, and transport, that CSU is a much better option for our law enforcement partners than having to wait in an emergency department, so they help there. And about 20% of the individuals MCRT has served uh, have been those who are unsheltered. So we are pleased uh, with the direction the program is going. We are pleased at the speed at which it was stood up. Uh, but obviously, we will continue to monitor and track, implement, and adjust uh, as we go forward to make sure that it fulfills uh, its promise. But today is a significant day, not just being 24-7 countywide, but having every law enforcement agency in our county now a part of a coordinated response, and we're grateful for them. Uh, I would like to first introduce uh, for you to hear from Chief Roxanna Kennedy, Chula Vista Police Department, as I mentioned earlier, uh, has been a real champion of MCRT and we're grateful uh, to the Chula Vista Police Department and the city of Chula Vista uh, for their leadership and work and to uh, Chief Kennedy for her efforts. Chief Kennedy. Thank you. Chula Vista Police Department is proud to be one of the first agencies to partner with the San Diego County's Mobile Crisis Response Team to provide crises intervention when appropriate without the need for a law enforcement officer. Through this partnership, law enforcement agencies are able to refer certain mental health crisis calls to the Mobile Crisis Response Team. Today, I'm, just, I'm not here just representing Chula Vista Police Department. I'm also, as um, uh, Chair Fletcher stated, representing the San Diego County Chiefs and Sheriffs Association. With me today, you, you will see the leaders of many of the county's local law enforcement agencies. And we are all focused on keeping our community safe while using our resources appropriately. For example, last year alone, San Diego County law enforcement responded to 38,380 calls for service for mental health related concerns. That's an average of 105 calls for service per day. While the men and women of law enforcement do a tremendous job every day evaluating these calls to, uh, to bring help to those in need, we realize not all the calls require a law enforcement officer. Our partnership with the county's mobile crisis response team has allowed us to free up valuable law enforcement resources to focus on other areas of public safety. San Diego County law enforcement is thankful for this partnership and we are committed to its success. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to uh, introduce Carla Evan. Even. Carla Even. Communications Manager for the Chula Vista Police Department. Carla? Hello, everyone. I wanted to start off by, as Chief Kennedy said, I'm not just here representing Chula Vista and our communication center, but 
all the dispatch centers in San Diego. Um, this process, when it kicked off, was something where everybody was confused and had questions like the community may have now of how how is this going to work and how are they going to be dispatched and what do you do with a caller and when do you decide when to transfer the call and it was our job as a community MCRT and law enforcement to come up with those answers and today I wanted to share some of those processes with you. Um, for us we decided the first thing to do was figure out how do we have a referral criteria? What criteria is that caller going to have to meet in order to understand, is it a law enforcement response or would it be best to have mobile crisis response team respond? And once we determine that within our agencies, we develop standard operating procedures for the dispatchers so they could understand what are the guidelines and what should they do when they receive a call from somebody that's having a mental health crisis. And a dispatcher's job is to transfer calls to other agencies if it's not appropriate to send law enforcement. Their job is to triage every call that comes in, whether it's criminal or civil, or if there's a different type of resource that could be sent, fire medics, different things like that. So when we had the resource in our toolbox now to send a mobile crisis response team instead of law enforcement, for us, we embrace that as dispatchers because yes, it's a change, but it also, gives the community an opportunity to have somebody respond that's a licensed clinician. Sometimes when the officers respond, they may not be receptive to someone in a uniform. So now, like Chair Fletcher said, that you have the opportunity to have someone that has the time and the training to be there and spend that extra time with, with them. Um, some of the questions that we, we use to determine when we triage the calls, is there violence that's happening? Are there any weapons? Um, if they're not, and it's you know a child, a family member, a friend, just having particular mental health, health crisis, then they need support, we're able to send mobile crisis response team to support that person. And also for the community, I, I just want to say thank you for showing up, for allowing us to go through this process with us, the media for being here, and all the innovative leaders in San Diego County, because not all regions have this program. And without our leadership, um, in San Diego, including law enforcement and all the people from MCRT that work together to get this up and running, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Carla. And, and just to, to put a point on, on how difficult their job is, it's easy to stand up here and say, if the person is a danger to themselves or someone else, law enforcement needs to go, and if they're not, MCRT needs to go. But the translating that into how that practically works and how they administer that and how they triage that and how they assess that uh, is a lot of work. Uh, the other reality is our 911 dispatchers have an incredibly difficult job, a incredibly hard job. Uh, and the work they do for our community is, is vitally important. And so injecting in a, a new series of criteria, a new process, a new system has not been easy. And we appreciate uh, greatly uh, the, the work that's been done and in particular, we're grateful uh, for Chula Vista National City for leading. I also want to want to give a shout out and a special thank you to the San Diego County Sheriff's Department. We work with them every day as, as being county entities. But under Sheriff Carol, Kelly Martinez is, is here, has been really driving and leading the effort uh, around how we better integrate the right care to the right person and how we, you know, divert people who don't need to go to jail to not have to go to jail. And how as individuals get discharged, do we connect them into care? And how do we create a better system? And our sheriff's department serves as the jail for every single law enforcement agency and entity in San Diego County. And so Kelly Martinez, we appreciate you and the sheriff's department and all of your work to help us regionally and, and everything you've done. Thank you, thank you for that. Uh, next, I wanna introduce Christian Hodges, the clinical director for telecare, as you've heard, you know, once the dispatcher makes the, the, the connection and the team gets dispatched, uh, these are the folks that have to go out and, and provide the care, and uh, they have done an incredible job uh, standing it up and getting it going, both telecare and Exodus, and we appreciate that. And, and Christian, we appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Thank you all for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to share the success we have seen with the rollout of the mobile crisis response team throughout the county of San Diego. As you've heard, we've responded to over a thousand calls with a significant number of those calls being diverted from law enforcement agencies countywide. Chula Vista PD being one of the first agencies on board allowing for implementation of MCRT services in their jurisdiction, 
has paved the way showing how ongoing collaboration can bring success to the execution of this much needed mental health service. We have seen a trend throughout the county of individuals who have, who have historically not been receptive to engaging with law enforcement when struggling with a mental health or substance use crisis are far more receptive to receiving the services provided by MCRT. Services that include connections with facilities that provide acute crisis stabilization, stable therapeutic crisis response in their homes, and most importantly, referrals to community agencies that provide ongoing mental health services. To highlight one success story of the many calls thus far, I will share the one of an individual who had routinely been calling their law enforcement agency with complaints that derived from their mental health symptoms. That agency was able to divert this call to MCRT. We were able to go out and get this individual connected with a crisis stabilization unit, providing them follow-up case management and connecting them with an assertive community treatment program, allowing for these interventions to support the individual in breaking the cycle of un unmet care. The goal of the mobile crisis response team is to bridge the gap between crisis response and law enforcement allowing the police to focus on keeping our community safe while we, the mental health professionals, support community members with therapeutic interventions. Thank you. Our final speaker today uh, is Dr. Piedad Garcia, the uh, Deputy Director of the Behavioral Service. I'll tell you in the county, if you want to be, get, have someone tell you what will work and what won't work, uh, you go and you ask Dr. Garcia and is there could not be a better person uh, to help guide the amazing job of setting up this program uh, of understanding the need that we have to move swiftly and kind of put it together as, as we're doing it and uh, she's been intimately involved not only in the launch of this but the partnership with law enforcement uh, and in the county of san diego we are incredibly proud of dr piedad garcia and incredibly grateful for her dedication and commitment dr garcia Well, thank you very much and good afternoon. Well, uh, what a way to celebrate Mental Health Month uh, here in San Diego and across the nation. Uh, this is a, a great opportunity to celebrate the collaboration and the partnership with the law enforcement jurisdictions that you see here. Uh, it has been quite a year uh, or even more uh, to develop this uh, memorandum of agreement and the referral criteria in, in partnership. And uh, we have been very successful, and I'm very uh, proud of the work uh, that we have done, Telecare and Exodus, the contractors that have pulled all of their uh, clinicians and case managers and peer specialists together to respond to the community and to the clients in the community and really work hand in hand with uh, law enforcement. I think that we also know that we have, uh, we're learning. We have lessons learned. Uh, we are applying them as we move forward. Uh, we are very nimble and flexible, and that's how we created the program so we can adjust uh, in the midst uh, to be responsive with our uh, community and our clients because that's ultimately who we serve, right, the, the clients. So uh, we will apply those lessons learned and uh, uh, tweak the model where we can and need to to be uh, the best program that we can be here in San Diego. So thank you very much uh, for being here today. and allowing us to uh, provide you with an update on the mobile crisis response team. Thank you. All right, thank you to, uh, to everyone. A special thank you again, Chula Vista National City. Uh, appreciate Chief Sweeney, Chief Kay uh, being here with us. Uh, City of San Diego, Under Sheriff Martinez, DA's office and everyone else. Uh, but again, all law enforcement agencies in San Diego County are now a part of this program. And again, just to reiterate, we encourage the public, please call the Access and Crisis Line, 888-724-7240. Uh, but we will now have in place systems to better be able to divert while we continue to push that. And a very strong step forward for our region to uh, better meet the needs of the people on the street.